For the first time you see them, you're not sure what you're seeing. Even now when I see them, I feel exactly like I'm seeing stars that have fallen into a meadow. When I talk to people in Utah about fireflies, 95% of the time people say, uh, I've never seen one here. I don't think we have them. They're suspicious about the project. But people generally when they're camping or hiking don't go to marshy places. And the other thing is they're only adults for like from late May to early July, is what we normally say, and they're only blinking after 10 o'clock at night. So a lot of times people are just in their tents. They're not wandering around in really dark places. And if you have your headlamp on or your car lights, you won't see them. Between 2014 and 2019, we found out about dozens and dozens of populations. And so far, I think we're up to 25 of the 29 counties have verified populations. My first goal is just to find out where do bioluminescing fireflies exist in the Intermountain West. Any question you could ask about fireflies remains to be asked. So we can't really know much about them, like what exactly are they eating? How important are they in the ecology? Are they threatened? Where were they 100 years ago? There are so many questions to answer. I hope I live long enough to answer half of them. Over the years, people have approached me and told me occasionally that they've seen fireflies. And one day I was talking to some researchers at BYU and we said, you know, if we know about a few places in Utah where they are, then there must be a lot more that people know about. And if we use the strengths of BYU's biology department and the Natural History Museum, we could probably find a way to ask people at large and find out about a lot more. And they're only adults for about five or six weeks, so we really have to rely on public participation because there's no way the small body of people we have working on this can be scattered around the state at 10 p.m looking in exactly the right meadows at the right times. And the people who know about them are super excited to participate because they're happy to have their sightings validated. So it's a win-win for everybody. Just last year, I was just walking here in my yard and walking between some bushes and a vehicle and a firefly literally, like a foot in front of me, flashed. It just kind of took me back. I didn't realize what it was for a second, and then I realized that's got to be a firefly. We had heard rumors that there were fireflies around here, but every time we went across the road to look at them, we would never see them. We've since learned that they only blink one month out of the year, and now we know exactly when to go look for them. It's almost like a family activity that you can all be involved in and, and enjoy together, and that's hard to do <laughs> in today's world. So that's something that's fun. It's something we all have in common, and we all are interested in. We've been really lucky that we've had people reporting from many, many, many different counties, people who are either recreating or who are very familiar with the land. I think it creates a positive relationship between um, the museum and rural communities and academia and people who know a lot about the land and scientists and researchers really want to know, but we just don't have any way to get that information without them telling us what they see. Chester isn't known for very many things, and so to be a bigger part of, you know, a bigger community and a kind of a bigger project, I think it's fairly unique and it's fun to be involved in. I just want to spark people's imagination and get them excited and also invoke a sense of stewardship. Like these wetlands hold something so magical. It's a keystone species. What, you know, what can we do to look after it and protect them?